Namaste everyone, welcome along. My name is Philippa. I'm joining you here from Lake Kawamba up uh, North Brisbane. Beautiful day, sunny, blue sky. So hopefully wherever you are, it's a nice day or maybe it's a rainy day and you wanna do some yoga and come inside and ground. Um, today's class is for, I, well, I've titled it Yoga for Hikers. I've been doing a few hikes lately and it inspi inspired me to do some stretches that are really good to help for after a really good hike. So we're working on the legs today. If you've done a hike, then great. If you haven't, still do the class. This is um, a class for everyone and anyone, but we are focusing on the lower body. So if you're wanting a different you know, if you're tight in your shoulders and maybe another class is better for your shoulders, but this one is for the legs. So it's 20 minutes class. Um, take it easy and just join in. Keep breathing as you move through the practice and just do what you can. So if there's any poses that you can't do, um, just come out, listen to your body and I'll try to give as many variations as I can. So we're gonna start the practice in child's pose, bringing your knees um, apart, your big toes together and then you can just start maybe upright here with the chest open. Or you can start to lean forward, bending from your hip crease so your spine is long as you hinge forward, chest comes down. And you can place your elbows on the floor. You can either place your hands at double fist and rest your forehead on your hands. Or you can extend your arms in front, placing the palms on the ground, resting your arms down, resting your forehead on the mat. And just take a few moments to relax your body into this position. So softening your hips back to your heels. Softening your shoulders down into the floor. Relaxing into your head and all your facial muscles. Just start to take a few deep breaths here. If you can, breathe in and out through the nostrils. Otherwise, you can breathe through the mouth. And just letting your head be heavy. Try to breathe into the abdomen, so into the bottom of your lungs. And allow that breath to expand into your rib cage the sides of your body. Also bringing that breath all the way into the chest, into the top of your lungs. Let's take a few more breaths here, really trying to relax your body as you unwind. And then in your next breath in, just slowly bringing up your body, coming into a kneeling position. Just stay where you are, I'm going to turn my body to face towards you guys. So taking um, your knees together, we're going to curl the toes under. So as you lean forward, curl your toes under. I'm just going to turn around to show you. So as you curl your toes under, sit back onto your heels, make sure your pinky toe is also curled under. And if you find that difficult to sit back on the heels, you can come to kneeling. So it's a little less pressure on the feet or the toes. Otherwise, you can sit back onto the heels. And this is a really great stretch for our feet, especially if you have been walking or hiking a lot. Your feet are going to be stuck in those shoes. So this is a really good way to stretch those muscles in your feet. Just breathing here. If it's really intense, come out and uncurl your toes. Just take two more breaths. Try to sit with a straight spine. And then we're gonna lean forward, come onto your hands, pick your feet off the floor, and then place the tops of your feet on the floor, the ground. I'm gonna go do the opposite stretch. So we're going to lean back and we're going to now notice how we can stretch the front of our feet. So as you lean back, Bring your hands behind your back, open your chest, and you can stay here. You might feel a stretch already in the front of your feet, your ankles. For those who want more, you can either lift one knee off, 
and then pause on the other knee or you can lift both your knees off and stretch the tops of your feet. Now for any time it feels too much, just come out. You know, this might not be for you. Stay with one knee or stay with just the knees on the floor. Try to open your chest here. Maybe you can lean a little further back. Just pause, take another breath here. And then lower your knees slowly back down. Bring your hands forward and make circles with your ankles. So like tabletop position, lifting your feet off the floor in wide, slow circles as you rotate the ankle joints. Just get a little bit more movement into the ankles. These um, hold a lot of weight when we go through our walking movement or if, even if we haven't done much movement with our feet, it's really good to bring that blood circulation through the ankles. So let's go the other way. Just wide, slow circles. And if you find it hard to balance on your knees, you can always do one leg out and then the other. Cool, give your toes a little pat on the floor. Relax the tops of your feet. So we're working our way up the legs. So we've done our feet, we'll move into the lower legs and the back of the legs. So coming through downward facing dog, bringing your hands forward, make sure your middle finger is directly forward and then pressing into your shoulders, engage your core. Let's lift the hips up towards the sky. Extend into the back of your legs here. So adjust your feet so they're at least hip distance apart. Hands are at least shoulder distance apart. And then you can bend your knees deeply here, opening the chest to the thighs. And then start to pedal your heels. So as you bend your left knee, straighten your right leg and draw your right heel down to the floor. Bend your right knee and straighten your left leg. So we're going to continue to alternate in this way, bringing some space into the back of the legs, the calf muscles getting an awesome stretch here. So take time to breathe from one side to the other side. And if this becomes too strong of a pose, you can do this on your knees and you can extend one foot behind and press through that foot and then you can alternate. If you do ever feel lightheaded or dizzy when the head is below the heart, please come down and take a rest. Now let's try with both um, of our legs. So let's bend both knees, open the chest and slowly start to send both the heels down towards the earth. Again, bend both knees, chest to thighs, bending and then gently straighten your knees as much as you can. One more time, bend and straighten. We'll come into a brief uh, forward fold. So bring your feet and your hands together at the center of your mat. Keep your feet hip distance apart. Lift your toes off the floor. Activate your feet and then relax your toes. And we'll come to halfway. So you want to straighten the back here. You can bring your hands onto your shins or your thighs. And try to make your spine parallel with the floor. Pause here. Draw your shoulders away from the ears and your neck is long. So you should be looking down at the floor here. So your neck is reaching long. Take another breath. And on your next exhalation, let's fold forward, hinge from your hips, bend your knees and release your arms down to the floor. Relaxing your head your shoulders and your head and arms, all relaxing down. Opening into the back of the legs here. Again, if you feel lightheaded, dizzy, just come back to halfway. So we're really gonna hang out here, get an awesome stretch. A few options we can do is we can sway the upper body a little side to side. We can place our hands to opposite elbows and encourage the weight of the upper body down as we drape forward and down. And then we're going to bend our right knee and straighten the left leg. And maybe the hands come to the hips for this one or the fingertips to the floor. If you have blocks, you can hold onto blocks. And then we're going to bend the left knee and straighten the right leg. 
So this just increases that stretch a little bit more on the hamstring and the outer hip. So one more time, bend your right knee, straighten your left leg as much as you can. And then bend left knee, straighten right leg. Bend both knees and fold one more time. And then walking the hands back forward, the legs back, coming into that downward dog position once again. Cool. Let's release towards our belly now. So come through a plank. <clears throat> Excuse me. Release your knees to the floor. And then gently lower your abdomen and your chest all the way down. So relax your body here, taking your hands in front, placing your forehead on the back of your hands. Give your hips a gentle wiggle side to side and relax your back muscles here, your back and your shoulders. Resting your forehead on your hands. Try to relax all the muscles in your legs, back, shoulders, arms. We'll come to stretch our quadricep muscles. So we're going to bend the left knee, bring your heel towards your left buttocks, and take your left arm out to the side. As you bring it around, try to hold onto your left foot or the ankle. And it's okay if your knees come apart here, it actually creates a bit more space. And if you can't hold onto your foot, you can still draw it towards the heel. Or if you have a scarf, or a strap, you can use your strap to help you. So try to bring your knees together now and gently encourage the heel, the left heel to the left buttocks. And our tendency here is for the hips to come away from the floor. So try to gently press the front of your hips into the floor here. You can relax your head on the hand. So some deep breaths into this left quadricep. You can easily ease off that stretch by bringing the heel away and you can go a bit deeper and bring the heel closer. Keep pressing the front of your hips gently into the floor, into your mat. Nice, let's slowly release that stretch there. Gently place your left foot to the floor. Switching your hands, so your left hand's underneath your forehead. Bend your right heel, take that right arm wide out to the side and then bring it all the way back, holding onto the knee, sorry, onto the ankle, the foot. You can bring that knee out to the side or you can bring your knees together. Rest your head and just gently, maybe this side feels a little different, but gently easing into that stretch. So you can bend your right elbow in order to bring the heel closer to the buttocks. If you feel any impingement or tension through the knee joint, if it's pulling, just don't go so deep. We don't want to be um, hurting our joints. We want to be really working in the belly, the center of the muscles here, especially this quadricep muscle. It's such a big muscle. Gently pressing the front of your hips into the floor. Enjoy breathing here. Well, let's slowly release the foot, the legs, and just take a pause, resting your forehead on the hands. You can wiggle your hips side to side, let the feet relax. <clears throat> so in a moment we're going to come into, sup um, into pigeon pose, but I just wanted to quickly demonstrate supine pigeon, which is a really um, nice alternative and easier pose um, for the hips. So if, you're, if you know pigeon pose, just come to downward dog and I'll meet you there. Otherwise, a little safer or easier variation is laying on the back and bringing one leg up, bending that knee and placing the ankle on the opposite thigh and holding. So you can just have a look at me if you need some assistance. So you can stay there. That's the easy version. Otherwise, we're going to be in downward dogs, so extending up the hips. And we're going to start with the right leg, bringing your right leg up. 
and then bending your right knee and take that knee into your chest. Place the right knee behind your right wrist and walk your left leg behind. Now make sure your hips stay level here. Sometimes we tend to sit on that right hip, so you want to keep the hips lifted. Bring your hands either side of the front thigh and knee and try to work this left front hip forward and down and the right hip up slightly. Now you can support that right hip or the buttocks with a block. Um, if, you, if, you're trying to, if your tendency is to sit down, you want to keep them level. Cool, so just breathing here. For those who are really uh, familiar with this posture, you can start to come forward and release down. If you want to just work into it, I like to go one step at a time. So you can start with the hands a little further in front. Try to lead with your chest here, so draw your shoulders back and down. Just have a little peep and make sure that left leg is straight back. We don't want it wandering too much off to the side. And then if you're okay with this, you can gently lower onto your forearms and your hands. Again, long spine, so the chin is slightly tucked. And we should be feeling this in the right outer hip around the glute and the thigh. If you're feeling it too much, you can always bring the right ankle closer to the body. If you want a little more, you can bring it further forward. Just keeping those hips square, level. And then if you're really open and feel comfortable, you can bring your forehead down onto the back of your hands. Please stop at any time if you feel any impingement or pain in the knee or the hip. So you just go to where you feel the stretch. And this is a great stretch just for, for hikers or walking as we use our glutes a lot, especially if we're doing mountains, uphill, stairs. So take a few deep breaths into this space. Really try to relax your hips. Slowly ease off, coming all the way back up, coming onto your hands. Really awesome counter stretch is coming back through downward dog. So you can slide that right knee back. You can do downward dog or you can do tabletop position. And then we're going to lift that same leg, so the right leg up, bend the right knee and open the right hip out to the right. Try to keep drawing that left heel down, open the chest. You can feel this great stretch on the opposite side of your hip. Cool. Gently release that right foot and then inhale, lift the left leg up. Coming onto the other side, bend your left knee, look forward, bring the left knee behind the wrist and then walk that right leg back, extending the leg back, propping yourself upright, hands either side of that front leg. And remember, you can come in at any time at any of those stages. Check that the hips are square, opening into the chest. That right leg is straight back behind. Folding forward with a long spine. And come down to the hands, the forearms. relaxing into those hips slightly tucking the chin into the chest relaxing here for two more breaths <laughs> Gently making your way back up, either coming through a downward dog or tabletop position. Lifting that same leg if you wish to go a little bit deeper in that stretch, opening the hip as you bend the knee. Pressing into your hands. Keep sending that right heel down. Chest is broad. Mm -hmm. 
and then slowly releasing the foot down. Bring your knees slowly down. Come into an easy child's pose. Resting your head down, your arms down. Or you can rest on the back of your hands. Hmm. And just notice how your legs feel, your hips. Just slowly now making your way up to a seated position. Crossing your legs, sitting with a tall spine. We're going to finish our practice off with just a, a moment or two of some kirtan meditation. So we'll sing the mantra, Goranga. I'll put it on the screen so you can see. And we say it in, oh, well, yeah, it's going to be in a style of, um, Kirtan meditation, so I'll just quickly explain. Kirtan is the singing of sacred sounds. So um, I'll sing the mantra. I think I'm going to sing it four times and then you guys sing in the response. And just try to let your mind rest in the sound. So just close your eyes if you like. Just letting these sweet sounds wash over your mind. one together. Just finish taking a nice deep breath in through the nose. Let it out through the mouth. Just notice how you feel. You're most welcome to take a few moments to lay down on your back and just take a few minutes to have a shavasana relaxation. But I'll say goodbye to you now and 
have a lovely rest of your day. Keep enjoying all the hikes that you have planned or maybe you want to plan to do a hike and, and then you can do this class after. <laughs> Thank you so much. Namaste.